All right, so we're on Demion here. It says, Henry Cavill threatens to exit Amazon's Warhammer 4K Woke Feminist Swarms Seller Blade. Oh, you can't get enough of this sh shit. Okay, with that said, let's start this. Let's go. Oh. From Warhammer. What's up everyone, it's Endymion, and there's quite a bit to talk about today from Warhammer 40k going absolutely nuclear in the last few days. And there's a new rumor that could explain why this is all happening and there's some dire claims being made. Beyond this, Stellar Blade is apparently awful because it was made for the male gaze, and Niantic has turned Pokemon Go into an androgynous slop simulator. But let's first start with this rumor about Warhammer. I should preface by stating this first, that this rumor has not been confirmed across the board, and it does come from the website 4chan, however the claim is allegedly being made by someone who has signed an NDA and has chosen to break their silence anyway. They also claim that they work at either Games Workshop or Amazon to some capacity and have some knowledge of the behind the scenes that are going on. But again, if this ends up not being true or anything, I would just like to state that again, this is a rumor. I'm not going to mic zero myself into making six videos in a row about things like the voices in my head telling me something, just so we're clear. I'm very much someone who likes to only report on facts with actual proof, but this rumor was really interesting, so that's why it's here. Anyway, according to this anonymous source, which by the way, I'll share the link to this 4chan post in the description in case you want to see it yourself, Games Workshop is allegedly being strong-armed by Amazon Studios into implementing things like female custodians into the lore. Ah, uh, the there we go. So allegedly only mentioning the existence of these female custodians within lore indexes, but has zero plans to actually create figurines or any actual product that depicts a female custodian in any form. The reason for this strong arming is allegedly Amazon, after signing the papers with Games Workshop for the partnership, was not happy with the fact that Warhammer 40k is very strict when it comes to its lore, and they wanted some level of freedom when it comes to how they adapt things going forward. In Warhammer, of course, you have roles that are specifically one gender or the other, like the Sisters of Silence for example. Obviously, they don't have men because, well, it has the word sisters in their title, so that makes sense. It's pretty simple, really, and that's why people like it. Anyway, Amazon doesn't like that at all, despite what fans why? think they want female characters in power armor as well alongside male ones too. For no other reason than apparently to virtue signal and show representation. And likely the main reasons for this change was simply because Games Workshop went into partnership with a massive corporation like Amazon, somehow not realizing that their IP would be changed to some degree once negotiations were finalized and actual brainstorming on potential shows and so on began. To me, the only real reason Amazon would push for female custodians is simply because if they didn't show female representation, they fear the series would suffer in critical reception from reviewers. Bullshit! Who would undoubtedly... Bull... Shh. The reason why I say this is because most people don't even know what Warhammer is. Most normies don't know what that is. Most normies don't know what that is. Bringing up Warhammer is like running up on someone and bringing up something called, um... It's like running up on someone and expect them to know anything about... What's a good one? Maybe Gotcha Akuda. In that sense. Especially to a normie who don't read anime or don't really watch anime. They only know the Dragon Ball, the Pokemon, and Digimon. You know what I'm saying? Like, most people know what kind of a Halo is. They know what Fortnite is. They know these very mainstream terms, right? For the most part. But majority of them don't know certain things. That are more more deep into the the niche of whatever the hell it is, right? So if I brought Gotcha the Kuda to someone who just watched like My Hero Academia and that's it, best believe they're not gonna know what that is or have any interest. Maybe, maybe not. Right? It is what it is. 
complain and then lower the scores of potential shows because they don't have proper representation on screen. Apparently, they want to do the Eisenhorn story and wanted to inject more women into leading roles within the Amazon Prime live-action universe. And this has allegedly, again, I cannot confirm this, but allegedly, Henry Cavill is very much against all of this. And he has allegedly, behind the scenes according to this, threatened to walk away from the project completely if lore is not respected with the utmost importance. Which we all man, get because look man what happens gets it. Netflix is The Witcher, he clearly the man gets it. a repeat of what happened over there. Allegedly, within the next month or so, we'll start seeing articles pop up about Henry Cavill moving forward with Amazon on this project. But there is apparently severe tensions behind the scenes where Cavill is threatening to leave to some capacity. The anonymous leaker does state later on in the thread that they are putting themselves at risk of even saying any of this. And if they get caught, they would likely get sued. Talk project details without all the emails in Slack. Type it out. Talk it out into oblivion by workshop and amazon alike they're apparently a grunt within one of these companies and according to them one of the main reasons amazon wants female custodians or just more women in general in warhammer altogether is they want moments within the series that spark huge social media reactions like for example what? they want something like a custodian fighting a battle and then they pull their helmet off to show that they're actually a woman this entire time Ew. Which would, obviously, cause the entire Warhammer fan base to erupt like a million Super Saiyans at once. So in a lot of ways, what's happening here is Amazon doesn't seem to care a lot about the lore, and instead sees Warhammer as another property that they can mine for viewership numbers and subscriptions at Prime. But what worries me is what always did from the inception of this announced partnership, which is that Amazon has proven they can absolutely disregard critical lore and ruin things in the names of virtue signaling. I mean, Rings of Power does exist after all. And even Fallout, to a certain extent, features a female character in the leading role, even though realistically she would be dead within minutes of reaching the surface or worse. But having a female lead is more ESG friendly than a male one, especially one that is white, for example. Wow. Reacher on Amazon, of course, didn't help Amazon's ESG Super rating. Super racist. And actually, let's go look at their ESG rating to show you what I'm talking about. On SustainAnalytics.com, you can actually search companies and see where they rank on the ESG leaderboards. In case those of you watching don't know what is ESG, ESG leaderboard, for, it means economic, social, and governance. Basically, think of it like a credit score, but for companies. And your credit is based on how woke you are and how much representation or diversity you have in your company. So if you ever wondered why companies always go out of their way to tell you they open some initiative that's aimed at certain groups to uplift them or something, it's to raise that ESG score. Anyway, ESG scores are ranked from 0 to 50. 0 to 10 means you're doing good because you're not high risk. And 50, obviously, means you've been a bad company and need rectifying. Amazon apparently ranks at 30.2 on the ESG risk Damn. score. So they are not doing well enough when it comes to ESG. This means other investors will look at Amazon and not want to invest in their company because it could affect their social credit scores by doing so. Wow. If this all sounds insane and really stupid to you, you're right. It, it is. This entire concept is moronic. And it goes directly against what makes a product or company actually... And you know what's sad? It doesn't end there. It won't just end there. It will eventually become more of a social media thing. It's gonna be it's gonna be part of our lives. That's gonna be that's gonna be our future. That's gonna be our future. That that's gonna be our future on the sense of we have to we're gonna have a social credit score saying how nice of a person you are or how compliant of a drone you truly are, right? And then when you want to show your true colors you can't because it might hurt your ESG score and what happens is with that um, that social credit score what's going to happen is that you can't get a job you probably can't get a car you probably can't get a house it's like having an actual credit card like credit score like you said like you won't be able to do anything till you comply with the masses and the wrong thing, or what, or the right thing, or the right side of history, they like to say. Good and profitable. And welcome to 2024, fellas. I've been fighting this nonsense for two years now, and it's not stopping. 
So as you can see, Amazon's ESG is not the best. In fact, they're in the lower end of companies when compared to their competition, which obviously looks really bad for investors and woke weirdos who virtue signal. The reason why I'm explaining this to you is to show you that the implementation of more female representation where it does not need to Samurai. You can't buy this house because your ESC score is too low. Whoa, yes, that's crazy. Your nice score, your niceness score is too low. You're not nice of a person to get this house to live. What the hell? ...is not being done for genuine reasons. It's simply being done to get that ESG risk rating from that 30.2 that it's at to a more acceptable 10 to 20 or even lower risk rating. And the more pandering Amazon does, like changing your Warhammer 40k lore to fit their agenda, the better it is for them. Sure, they'll lose money and viewership numbers, but to them, millions of dollars lost is worth making that arbitrary score go down just a little bit more. But I think what this alleged rumor claims is that it's not Games Workshop's fault entirely. And clearly, they know that this lore change would upset the fans. I mean, take a look recently at their stock prices, and yeah, it's not looking good. But it seems that Games Workshop is attempting to mitigate the damage and ride out the storm of controversy by simply stating that there is female custodians all along. But they're again not actually going to make any figurines or any actual product that depicts this in physical or promotional form, allegedly anyway. So they're trying to appease Amazon in order to get this live action series to happen, but are taking what they see as necessary evils in return to make it happen. But of course, the alleged claim that Henry Cavill is not happy with these changes and has threatened his exit are not good no matter what. Because if Cavill were to leave Warhammer prior to even a teaser of a show or something happening, it would signal to the entire internet that Amazon's 40k live action series is dead on arrival and they would be starting their marathon with bullets in both calves bleeding out while assuring everyone that everything is fine. But this does give some level of credibility since Games Workshop has a new codex about the Adeptus Custodians being released in 2024, which thatparkplace.com was kind enough to chronicle the relevant pieces within I'm their back. latest article that's titled, Numerous Warhammer players oh, cancel on. their subscriptions and announce a boycott of Games Workshop after announcement of female Adeptus Custodes. Some of the excerpts from this upcoming codex confirm that female custodians exist like this one where they say, Custodian Calidus Torvela Cash stood upon the bridge of a Cobra class destroyer. Named back. Vigilant Flame, the I'm warship dead. belonged to the mighty battle <laughs> fleet Solar. She lingered in the shadows at the back of the bridge, positioned at a spot where she could observe the actions of every crew member, be they in the instrumentation pits or the armament shrines, or, in the case of Shipmaster Lethwick, stood ramrod straight before his command throne. There's more, it continues to say, Cash was warned before anyone else abroad, sensing a sudden empiric energy spike coupled with the surge of hi, hi, pressure I'm back. and sharp temperature drop that Samurai. a teleport strike. Welcome back, Her Mono. guardian spear was leveled and armed before the first cry of alarm or howl of a klaxon rang through the bridge. So as you can see in this upcoming codex, they are indeed changing Tidy. critical lore that has remained untouched for so long, and allegedly... In big time, how do you get the big time token? Samurai. You can get it as a random drop Hi, JR, game. Welcome to the stream. Or cracked hour welcome to the stream. It's only being done in order to appease Amazon Studios pretty much because of the live action series. Before JR. I move on, just remember Been this lurking is a all bit. rumor. So if it ends up JR. being fake or something, I apologize. Thanks though. But I figured that I let you know all that we can know at the moment just in case it becomes relevant. But at the very least, I can confirm that yes, they are changing the lore going forward, and that's already alarming. Will Henry Cavill leave? I guess time will tell. I hope everything works out though, but now let's head into the next big story here with Stellar Blade. That game is selling out everywhere as pre-orders skyrocket across the board. And like I said, it would happen, websites are already starting to run hit pieces against the game prior to its release next week. The latest is from Inverse and it's titled Stellar Blade and the Male Gaze. There's a lot of toxic feminist nonsense in this article, but I want to read the parts that are the most relevant, Inverse said, and I quote, Eve doesn't seem to have any reaction to her own sexiness. There's no knowing facial expressions, no flipping of her long ponytail, which players can shorten in the options menu. She has no idle animation, except when she's on a ladder, she just stands there. 
She's sexy, but doesn't know it. She's athletic and acrobatic, cares? but entirely controllable. If she did know, if she could move for herself, it would shatter the illusion of many of the gamers championing her because she'd have the agency to be able to reject them rather than simply be controlled by them. The way What in the fuck? <laughs> wow. Feminist, you are reaching hard. <laughs> Damn. Like, listen, a, a video game character can't even resist, has to resist you even when it does nothing. <sighs> so, for instance, if you're playing the game and you put down the phone, you put down the, the game for, for like probably 10 seconds to a minute and you're answering like a text message, the game needs to let you know that you're a, you're a pleb and nothing more. She needs to reject you, let you know that you're just a loser and you, this is the only thing happening because you have no 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 chance. That's literally what what they're saying. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. There is a there is a there, there is a underbelly of hatred towards men. I don't know where it's coming from, but it's wild. We gaze changes in video games as it often depends on the differences present between gameplay and cutscenes. A lot of the time we aren't really looking at the avatar, we're looking through the avatar and with the avatar. This is most obvious what? during Stellar Blade's combat, all eyes are on the enemies waiting for an opening to counter or dodge. Eve is a blur, defying any gaze that would seek to isolate one part of her body from the devastatingly effective whole. During cutscenes, the perspective and the gaze changes. There's something there in showing the physical potential of that body type with combat and athleticism. It's not just nice to look at, then you get to the cutscenes and every Raiga single Samurai. one of those narrative sequences- So do we suppose put it on auto mode or something? I- I don't know. <sighs> I, I don't know what they want, because they want us to be rejected even when we're not playing the game. We want just want to put it down, you want to go get some food or something, and the bitch is supposed to respond and let us know that- we are terrible because we are controlling this woman to do things that we want her to do. Like, I don't know, like, play the freaking game that's designed for? But, like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Feminist. It starts with the camera pointed at her bum. That's doing something different. There's also a robot who follows Eve around during exploration segments, shining a light that frequently highlights her behind. Eve's body is both a site of empowerment and objectification depending on how we're invited to look at or through it. Based on the social media responses to news about Eve's body and outfits, clips of her way her bum and thighs jiggle as she climbs ladders, all this amidst the pushback against games that feature diverse characters and bodies, a lot of straight men seem to be assuming themselves as the rightful target audience of not just Stellar Blade, but video games in general. Statistics show that this just isn't true. As of 2023, around 50% of people who play video games are women. Shift up a super Let's be honest here. When they ever say 50% of women are 50 of women are gamers, what they're really doing is fudging the numbers by adding both console, PC, and um, mobile. Mo women are the most at mobile games. There are more women playing mobile games than console and PC combined. But they don't like to tell you that because when they tell you this, you start realizing how small the numbers are between PC and, and console are between men and women. They don't tell you that. That's how progressives get over you. They don't tell you the whole full specific truth. They just tell you a general truth and the truth is not even real. It's a, it's, it's, it's a amalgamation of several truths under one truth combined as one to make one whole truth that actually is just coming off as a lie. That's what they're trying. That's what they're doing to you. So whenever they say 50% of women are gamers, that is not true. In 50, they make probably most or 50% of the mobile market. There are more women playing on mobile games because they're playing like farm games, puzzle games. Uh, mostly if you look it up, you can find it yourself. There's a study, I think from, 2018 2016 i think 2018 pretty recent yeah it's not no, yeah i think it's 2018 you can look this up yourself majority of women are mostly mobile gamers now does that make them less of a gamer no 
But to say that majority of women makes up 50% of like PC and console is out of the question. There's more males playing console and PC than females. Not saying there's not women don't play PC or there's not women who don't have an Xbox or or a PlayStation or even a Nintendo Switch or whatever the hell. Not saying that. I'm saying that there is more men playing these type of devices than women. And because they may play most of the devices on them, they play most of the games that are there. Like your Halos, your G your, your Gears of War, your uh, Destinies, your uh, GTA, um, your, well, your Stellar Blades, your uh, virtually everything and anything. This is why most men are more annoyed at the whole female thing than females are. Now, I'm pretty sure those females are annoyed about the whole female western ugly, ugly, ugly vacation thing going on, but maybe they're not as vocal, or maybe because there's their own reason, but there's more men complaining about this than women. No, I'm not saying women don't complain about this, it's just more men doing it because there's more men playing Raya it. Raya Samurai. WYM teach 50% of women definitely play Madden. <laughs> play Madden. <laughs> Oh my god, that is funny. <laughs> you, yeah, I'll die on that hill. That is, imagine, imagine that. Imagine that statistic. Imagine that I'm statistic. I, I don't care. Since like, thinking of picking up an bro, instrument, what do you think would fit my personality? Violin. Um, or a kazoo. Anyway, the point is, is like it's funny. It's it's that's funny. That is funny. I mean, I have never seen a line of women buying a game like men. I have never seen a woman play men or buy a men game. She might Says be playing her boyfriend's game the one. or a husband's game of Madden, but I have never seen them go out their way to buy a Madden game. A a, 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 a golfing game, uh, any sports game like that. Shit. Shit, there's more, there's more men watching women's sports than women watching women's sports. That tells you something right there. The audience of men and leaning into the male by that second so one. <laughs> I know is, you. <laughs> in essence, a marketing move that purposely <laughs> others a huge number of potential players. If producers want to create video games that are only intended for male audiences, it's really unwise because they are alienating a huge demographic. With Gamergate, it was this idea of you are taking away our culture. It's not your culture, JR. it's everyone's culture. Women I used to work at a video new. game store, and I'd say 99% of customers were men. Thank Unless you. Unless it was a Nintendo game release. Thank you. I'm not pulling all my ass. This is true. What woman you saw actually went and said, I need to get the latest Madden? It just doesn't exist. It just doesn't exist. And if it does exist, that is a unicorn. We must study it. We must study that unicorn. We must capture it. Give it a bunch of carrots and fruits. And make sure it gives us what it needs. We need to know what makes it JR. tick. That said, my Hell Divers squad has two girls in it. That sounds awesome. That actually is awesome. See, like I said, it's not like women don't play video games. It's not like women don't play PC or console. They do. But I don't think they make the mass majority of that. I just don't think so. I don't think they make 50% of that. If anything, they probably make 20%. At max, probably 30%, but I'm just saying, like, and that's, I'm being very, rel really generous with that number, but, like, I don't think they make 50% of either console or PC. 
even combined, I don't like probably combined. They might make a good forty percent, thirty percent, maybe. No, I'm being lying. I feel like thirty to thirty-five percent if combined between PC and console, but separated, I don't think so. I do not think so. Mobile games, definitely. I definitely believe there's more women playing more mobile games than men. I believe that one hundred percent. And no, not because JR. they think they're playing Farmville. It's the same issue with wokeness in the tabletop space. Yes. I run Dungeons and Dragons game, and I've had three female players ever in the last ten years. Damn. 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 Only three for the last ten years? Well, that sucks. I'm sorry. See, this is what I'm talking about. There's th like, remember, women have different interests as men. There are some women who will play Dungeons and Dragons, but majority of them won't. For every for every 20, 20, 20 bodies of women, probably three will play. Right? But like for every twenty men playing Dungeons and Dragons, I'm pretty sure more than half will play. And I'm not talking about between white men or any type of race. I'm just saying men in general as a gender, like just literally. Whether they're black or whatever. They are. They're totally welcome in the space. They just usually are not interested. interested. And then the ones who feel like they can get up on on people will say, You're this is what this is why I said it here today. They'll get into the hobby. The people who don't belong to be in a hobby, this is why gatekeeping is needed. But then again, I understand why people hate it. But this is why it's needed. Or at least a vetting process. We need a vetting process. Because the people who comes into the hobby will change the hobby by saying that you guys are not being inclusive enough. And then when you let them in said hobby, they'll change all the rules to fit their needs and against everyone else and then when they finally get their so-called rules thing change in their own way in in the space that they didn't create or came in in they'll say okay we changed everything now since the things are the way we are you leave or if you don't like it, you can leave because now we're inclusive. We're not being a certain way like you were to us. And then you think to yourself, I don't need to deal with this bullshit. I can go somewhere else. So when you go somewhere else, guess what happens? The thing that they built off your thing and actually destroyed off your thing isn't as fun as they thought it was when it originally was before. So what they do is they turn their neck, they break their neck at break a uh, next speed pace and look at where you're doing or what you're doing over there and be like, Hmm, you guys are out excluding us. Let us come into your shit that we kicked you out of. And it's the whole thing all over again. That's what wokeness has done. Jr. I kick people from the table if they are woke. Yep. I don't allow people who cannot separate fantasy from reality when yep. I run a D&D &D game. Hello, Emma. How are you doing, I'm well? also creating third-party stuff doesn't have that wokeness in it. Thank God. I understand. You can't have woke people in your games. They ruin it for everyone else. They make it about themselves, and they're extreme narcissists nine times out of ten, and they do not give a sh about anyone's feelings or anything like that they claim they do but you end up realizing that they never did in the first place it's just their way of using other people's pain to incentivize um the people who are already in charge to not look at a certain way so they'll they'll count out to their so-called guilty rules and then when you do this you not only just ruin the game, ruin for future players, and just ruin for the current people there, you just gave power to an insane right, individual. Right. And then they say you You're gatekeeping. gatekeeping. This is why you just, just gatekeep. Might as well just gatekeep. If they're gonna... This is what I'm saying. It's best to gatekeep and be accused and doing it instead of trying not to and trying to maybe be exclusive as possible, and they still call you gatekeeper. Might as well just gatekeep the shit out of them. You know what I'm saying? It makes no sense. It, why kowtow to this nonsense? This is what Kyle said. I'm not going to um, appease your genjutsu. It makes sense. Why wouldn't I do that? Why would I do this? To, to infuriate everyone around me and the people who are coming in and out? 
You know what I'm saying? It's changing the rules because you don't like what's happening. If you don't like it, get the fuck out and make your own damn thing like the people did before you. Do that. Don't come into something that people agree upon for 10 plus years on something that was made genuine for all to enjoy and then you change it because you don't like a certain color of a character and you think they they represent some type of uh character from um a a, a, a race JR. that never was mentioned in the slightest I never thought gatekeeping was needed until I encountered that the issue. issue yep I agree I it is what it is seen enough to believe these individuals suffer from narcissistic personality disorder it's usually it's usually a, a mental illness type thing. That's what it is. It's people. It's unchecked problems that they're. It's unchecked issues that they have. So they're using their unchecked subconscious issues into something that's surface level, like a game, like uh, Dungeons and Dragons, Wizard of the Coast type stuff. Anything to that point, and then tried to fundamentally change everything Says about it. Mike what they did with the hilly trails in Genshin I'm Impact. good you I'm good hon uh just doing my thing trying to finish this drawing for uh for uh Ari uh, I'm about to finish up and do the ear uh the hair and then uh, oh the hair is done I just gotta line art it and then just give it some black and white and then we'll be done um I don't think I'll be able to done tonight I might get it done by I don't think I'm going to do artwork tomorrow we're gonna do a, a sponsorship tomorrow for AFK, uh, if I still have it, if tomorrow says they correlated that race to another race in real life. Yeah, I remember. Made no sense. Yeah, the the wildest thing I remember they said is that the like they said that um, what was it that uh orcs represent that of uh a super a certain group of people. I'm like, how did you make that distinction? How where did you get that distinction per se? Because remember, the people who are making that assumption is the one making it up. Says or the hilly trails from Genshin Impact. Or Yeah, or the hilly trails from Genshin Impact. That's a perfect example too. Right? How can you make that distinction? That I have never looked at an orc and be like, you know, that reminds me of a certain group of people I, I, I know. Or a certain group of people I live around. You know what I'm saying? That doesn't, that doesn't make a lot of sense. They're orcs. They're literal monster-like humanoid individuals who have big teeth very muscular nine times out of ten and bigger than the average human person for you to even say or make that correlation who's the racist you know what i'm saying where did you get that idea in the slightest please tell me you know what i'm saying that's wild so when they think they're on the right side of doing whatever the hell they're doing, they're actually the true problematic individual. This is why you don't let them in. This is why the idea of gatekeeping Says that is Emma needed. has smiley face seal her. Oh, Emma. Oh, I forgot. You don't know. So we do this thing called reactions. So we're doing a reaction video um, on YouTube, whether it be controversial or something in between. But we usually do all the controversial videos first, and then when we get through them, we go to the more fun stuff, like the anime recommendations and stuff like that. Nothing too crazy, not about woke stuff. Usually it's just recommendations, whether it be an anime JR. or a, a manga. Um, Wizards did the same with the Space Monkey playable race. Yeah. I have a black player in my main D&D group, and he was frustrated that people were offended for him when he wanted to play it. There you go. You see how wild that is? That's wild. This is the same, this is the same, this is the same uh, example I said. It's like, what this is, it's called the, the Black Power Ranger uh, conundrum. Says Jace has run a fine line of being logical band again. I know. Um, it's, it's the Black Power Ranger conundrum. Because it's like this. If we have a Black Power Ranger... If we put a, if we put a black person in the black Power Ranger outfit, that makes us racist because he can just be black. He can't be any other color. But if we put someone else that is non-black that's in that part that suit, we're racist because we're not giving black people their, their 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 specific color type that would represent them. So no one can't be the black Power Ranger. Do you see how that's wild? That's insane. Says yeah. Try putting a white man in the Black Panther outfit for a movie that will not fly. Yeah, a perfect example, Moral. She just said it. I, mean, I don't think I, I, I connected the thing. But uh, she said it. 
Imagine putting a white man in the Black Panther JR. outfit. But Black Power Ranger was the coolest. Hey, I know that was the coolest Power Ranger. Like in the nineties, uh, the old Power Rangers, uh, uh, Morphin, uh, Mighty That's Morphin Power Rangers. M -M -A -I -M well. Oh, and Emma, if you want to be part of the conversation, if you want to hear what we're talking about, you can come over here on YouTube and Twitch. The reason why I'm not allowing you guys to hear it on TikTok, because TikTok's too much a pansy and can't handle uh, conversations. I can't, I don't trust TikTok like that. I just don't trust TikTok like that. Because last time we tried Says this I would on... be over there on YouTube or Twitch, but I banned XD lol. I tried to... JR. Let me see over here. To be honest, black and white are just cool badass action colors in the first place. Yeah. Night bed. At JR Oops, I did it again. Blacklisted spam warning. It's wild, man. Wait, which one am I? Oh, wait, it's it's hold on. It's a uh, Chrome. Wait, which one? I have two Chromes open. I have two Chromes open. Oh, is this one? Okay, there we go. Hold on, hold on. Let me add that real quick. Sorry, guys. But yeah, it's 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 wild to me. That doesn't make much sense. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is why the idea of gatekeeping is needed. Because if you're going to accuse me of gatekeeping, might as well gatekeep. When I'm trying to be as inclusive as possible. Imagine being accused of being a robber when you didn't rob nobody. Shit, if it's going to be that way, might as well just rob them. <laughs> Is your YouTube yeah, same thing, same everything, hun. It's in the link it's in the link tree. If you want to click on if you can see it, I know some people can't for some odd reason. I think that's a TikTok issue. But if you can see the link tree, click it and you go to the you you can choose between YouTube, Twitch, Trovo, or Kick. You can pick any of them and you will see the video as just as normal as anyone. And if you're wondering, yes, this will be on YouTube. The sections of these will be on YouTube on their independent way. So I do the streaming, we talk about it, and then once the stream's over, I go and take that snippet of that whole section and put it as a YouTube My video. My father with told me he started smoking because his mother said, I know you're smoking, and grounded him. So he figured, might, might as, as well. well. Might as well. If you're going to accuse me of something I can't get out of, it, might as well be doing it. You know what I'm saying? No, sometimes that logic can go backwards on you, because if someone's accusing you of something heinous, don't try to prove them out of doing something heinous, but if something as stupid as that, might as well. Games, there's a struggle for dominance where actually there has never been dominance. The truth is, a lot of people, men, women, non-binary, straight, queer, find Eve attractive. However, the way Stellar Blade is being marketed is drawing in the new Gamergate 2 crowd. And Eve is being used as a cudgel by which to bash other feminine protagonists and even women journalists like Kotaku's Alyssa Mercanti. Rather than just catering to the male gaze... And Teach, I will go sleep, sleep now. now. Bye. Bye. Have a, have nice, a nice day. day. Okay, Mono. Have a great night, bro. I appreciate you. Thank you for coming in. I hope to see you tomorrow. Creating hourglass figures and jiggly... And do well in your homework. Consider the muscle mommies, the dad bods, disabled people. Greater representation in body types doesn't have to mean less attractive. Raiga Samurai. It's not about making Good night, less Mono. sexy. It's about making... I don't get it. That's wild to me. Games more sexy for more people. <sighs> Says and clip stuff. Okay, there's a lot there, but that ending part especially is hilarious to me that they're mad that Stellar Blade <gasps> apparently only adheres to the male gaze. And they're upset that developer Shift Up has not considered making characters within the game more representational of other body types. They even unironically state that Shift Up is wrong in not having disabled people or people with dad bods in it. However, the game is not out yet, as of the making of this video anyway, and we don't know if they don't adhere to those sorts of body types. But disabled who is cares? a term. I mean, there's the old guy in one of the trailers who looks like the village elder, but he's all part machine too. He doesn't look like he can walk or anything. I could be wrong. The game isn't out yet, so maybe he's disabled too. Plus, there's people in the trailer that you can talk to who are more machine than human, so they're technically. You believe you have to you have to draw straws on something as illogical as this? Raiga Samurai. You believe this? Eve is a beautiful character, but they're treating her like she's Ivy from Soul Calibur. And it's getting worse because when you think about it, back in the day when Bayonetta and 2B came around, 
people did make their stink, but it was not on the same level as this. Like, the only people who made this stink was probably just feminists, and that was it. Nothing more than that. And probably some simp men, that's it. But, like, that was it. That was just it. Now it's getting to a point where you must demand and adhere to these insane terms of being unattractive. Because if you are unattractive, or if you're attractive, you're harming unattractive people somehow. When they can be just as attractive as you with enough with enough makeup, working out, eating healthy, going to bed early. Like, most of your problems can stem by the way you dress, the Three car coronations. I moved to the YouTube live BTW. Okay, hon. I appreciate it. Thank you for coming over here, Emma. Thank you, thank you. So, like, imagine that. Like, imagine... Like, all, most, most people JR. think they're conventionally it's ugly. It's because it's cultural warfare. The, the goal, goal is, is to, to make, make the Western Western submissive. submissive. Yeah, that's what it is. It's, it's to, it's to, it's to silence the idea of any of standards, right? It's 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 silence silencing the sense of standards. So women can't have standards of what type of men they want. Men can't have the type of standards what they what type of woman they want. And if any of these two individuals happen to be attractive, you're you're some type of in internal misogynist or you're misogynist right right internal for right. females and Hi, then Emma. you're just a uh uh jr it's insane because if they can convince you there is no difference between men and women they can convince you have anything yeah it's the it's the it's the what's the term what's the term two plus two equals five right if i keep JR. telling you that two plus two of equals asterisk. five you're eventually either going to believe it or go with it. Either one of those two things. You may not even believe it, but you have to go with it because we said so. Nothing more, nothing less. That's literally what that is. And Black Ops did this perfectly. And they, I think low-key, the people from uh, Call of Duty who made that game with the 2 plus 2 equals 5 thing was telling us something low-key in their own special way. JR. Have you heard the song by High Res 2 plus 2 equals, equals five? 5? Not the song, but I've heard that term from the Call of Duty thing. And it's it's on par on this. It's like if if I can convince you over and over, if I keep telling you over and over again, no matter how stupid it may be, you might eventually accept it for what it is, or you might go with it and believe it. That's insane. And that's dangerous. Disabled because even really if you say 2 plus 2 is 5, make them count to 5. Because they have 5 fingers. You know what I'm saying? That's the most stupidest part. You 2 plus 2 equals 5 as they claim. But can you count? Can you count to four to, from two, 2 plus 2? And count how many fingers you got. Have 2 fingers up and count them. Individually and see what happens. You know what I'm saying? that You see how stupid this is? human anymore and i guess they have dad it's sad dad. that a demon has to actually sit here and draw straws on what people is considered disabled for them to feel peas or at least prove that this is not as um problematic as people are making out to be jr in a video game the cult demands obedience yeah in a video game where everyone is half machine half human or some form of demon you know what i'm saying like it's insane but they're robots Honestly, why does any of this even matter? Already they're running their hit pieces like I knew they would, and they're attempting to bring this game down because of what it represents to the gaming community. The fact that Inverse.com stated earlier in the article that they're disgusted that Eve can be controlled by the player, then they state that if Eve could control herself, she would be insulted by the player. Like, what are you even talking about? All this inverse writer is doing here, along with the people they interviewed for this article, they are just attempting to push their politics and ideas into Shift Up's characters, and they're mad that they don't adhere to their ideology. Eve would not be disgusted to be controlled by the player, as if that is even an argument because she's a video game character. Every character in a game that you can assume control is different. Men, women, robots, cats, dogs, whatever. To pull this woke feminist notion into this is moronic but it's not surprising sadly have I you noticed that this type of conversation did not pop up when when crash bandicoot came back from from bob's toys remember the the, the latest crash bandicoot game that came out no one made a big stank about crash being male they didn't care about crash being like having no neck it's literally shoulder to arm like 
literally head to like no sh- no neck at all. He's literally head to shoulders. No one complained about that in accuracy. No feminist came out and say this is not an accurate depiction of a uh, of a uh, cra- of a bandicoot. You know you don't see a bunch of Australians losing their fucking mind over a cartoon character. But for some odd reason, if it re- even resembles that of a humanoid individual in the slightest, they have to make it. It's not real enough. It's not realistic. It's like these fucking idiots who come in my stream and ask me, you know, this is not realistic for me. I'm like, why are you here? Why did you come? Why did you come? Why did you come here? Why did you come here? Sorry, but I GTG. I'll see you next stream, though. Okay, Emma. Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. Either they are just trying to paint narratives to hopefully cause enough people who read this article to feel disgusted with themselves for looking forward to something like Stellar Blade. And if they manage to succeed in that regard, then maybe they can affect the game's sales and overall cultural impact by effectively JR. shaming... Hi, my name it's is kind Hannah, of like how when Red Dead 2 streamer heard a woman and got pressure. banned, but there's millions of men characters being brutally killed every day. Yes. It's a double standard. It is wild. And you know what? In a weird way, I don't want to say I blame men for this, but we men have to stand up for ourselves and for each other. We got to start doing that. Because I kind of noticed something with uh, at least what feminists do, even if they don't even like each other. If both of the women agree on that that specific thing, they'll fight tooth and nail to the Says death. Drawing on it's too tough. It's too tough. Can the pen draw for me? <laughs> yeah, it's like drawing is drawing's too tough. Can the pen draw for me? Can, that, well, we where you have that? That's called AI art. We got the AI bros. Onto beautiful women in video games. But clearly, it isn't working. Like I said, Stellar Blade's pre-orders are insane, and the game is out of stock physically across the board already. And if anything, articles like this will just embolden more people to reject their nonsense and embrace big boobah Says Oshi Korean that's to tough meme instead. is getting a I little too real. I said this times in the past, but mark my <laughs> words, fellas, when this game's reviews do come out, which if you're watching this prior to those going live, they're going to mention the sexuality of Eve in pretty much every review. This game's release will be the Hogwarts Legacy of 2024. Maybe not as nuclear per se, because you know J.K. Rowling isn't involved, but they will attempt to suppress it. And I will be interested to see if Stellar Blade gets any sort of nomination whatsoever come the Game Awards or any other site. Ryagos if it Samurai. doesn't, that wouldn't surprise Teach, me I since they the only video, nominate stuff that it. has right thing. You can't see it. Okay, hold on. You can hear the video, but you can't see it. Okay, hold on. Let me fix it. I think that was my fault. Hold on. Sorry about that. Yeah, that was my fault. Hold on. Thank you for letting me know. Or if it's so good they can't deny it, like Elden Ring or Sekudo. But I am expecting lower than expected review scores for Stellar Blade by these Western games journalists on purpose. I also like how Inverse attempts to say Stellar Blade is being promoted to the Gamergate 2 crowd as some sort Raya of Goss gotcha, Samurai. but this strengthens what I there previously said. They're trying to shame you into not buying the game. They want to justify bar. Stellar Blade and Gotta make it some honest, sort of cultural stain upon I'm in your Photoshop public persona at the same if you time. say you it's all right. it's all right. enjoyed the game or bought it. The very it happens sometimes. Not not all the time, but that's like a once in a while thing. Happens. Same thing as Hogwarts Legacy. I wouldn't even be surprised if they Oh, that's make probably why list. Emma left. She kind of got confused and wondering what the hell. It's like, like they did for Legacy, where they have records of which streamers or YouTubers played or streamed the game. Which, by the way, that was a real site that was called Have They Streamed That Wizard Game? And it was made to compile everyone who played Hogwarts Legacy in order to publicly shame them? Or use that gotcha so they could lose sponsors or opportunities because they bought something that they deemed wrong thing? But this is how far these groups are willing to go. They will shame you, attack, and attempt to belittle you for wanting to play something that they don't like. By the way, I platinumed Hogwarts Legacy and I loved it. I didn't stream it, but if they want to Raya update Goss their Samurai. list and put my name on it, that go right ahead. Wizard game Just LMAO. remember, it's in yep. Neon with a capital E. No, that's even worse. Key. They said that it was a website. I don't know if anyone knows this, but there was a website. They, there's a, a moron who actually made a, I think, a website curator to let you know what, what, um, individual played the played the Hogwarts Legacy game. So you type in their name, and if they played it once or at all in their entire life streaming it, it'll let you know so people can go attack them and dox them. That was the that was the that was the key factor.
TV doesn't have a space, it's all one word. I just want to make sure I'm properly categorized for apparently being a bigot, so JR. thank you. And if they, they do the same for Stellar Blade, to please make add me to that list as well. People. So everyone yeah. can know Several that Indeed Beyond TV came back is from absolutely that. an enjoyer of tig old biddies and sexy women, which I am, by the way, guilty as charged. After all, I am a lesbian, I love women, of course other <laughs> companies have made updates to their games that have also divided fans. We have Niantic, which I never know if I'm pronouncing right, which makes Pokemon Go, and they're a company that's based in San Francisco, which is obviously one of the wokest places on the planet, and this ties into Stellar Blade as this is what places like Inverse want to happen to things like Stellar Blade or even Warhammer 40k. Also from that parkplace.com we have this article titled, Pokemon Go players demand Niantic reverse newly rolled out avatar changes, why y'all make everybody ugly? You can find thousands of replies to Niantic changing Pokemon Go's body types where people are demanding that they change it back. Gone are the hips or feminine qualities of characters and now everyone looks ambiguous when it comes to their gender. Like look at these side by side comparisons, it's not even up for debate dude, they cooked your avatars. Like this user Damn. who said their avatar now looks like a lesbian and I mean they're out of line but they're right they do. Look at these users' avatars who said, please tell me how you think the new avatar looks better in any way. Gone are their hips, they don't look feminine anymore, and if you do go look at their replies, you'll notice that the people complaining about these changes more often than not are actually female players. Yep. Because despite what Inverse.com and Niantic and others believe, women actually like playing good-looking female characters. Yep. Because what woman out there wants to be ugly? Well, unless they're a crazy person, the answer is very unlikely. Most JR. women go to the gym they and wear makeup only talking and buy nice about clothes for themselves to take photos of My their looks so that they now can feel has and eyelashes. <laughs> I just uninstalled it. <laughs> Confident. And there's nothing wrong with that either, by the way. We love good-looking women who take care of themselves over on this channel. But these companies hate you ladies and it's evident. Your individuality is being stripped from you and you're gonna be labeled bigots if you disagree with them. Mm -hmm. They don't want diversity of body nor mind no. anymore because they want you all to look like amorphous gender beings and mm -hmm. then you'll be happy or you'll get banned. And it's just as I said in a video around, I think, two months ago when a ex-Naughty Dog artist kind of just blew this whole thing open. And they said that these changes to gender and whatnot are being done to only appease to trans people. Because if characters look too male or female, it will offend trans players, but really what this does is just make trans players only able to identify in games with ugly characters. Mm -hmm. Which in a way is more insulting than anything else, because it means these companies think every trans person can only identify with the character if that character is ugly and shapeless, and is that not more offensive than anything else? Ideally, they would make proper good representation for male, female, and trans players instead. Let the female characters be curvy and show their proportions and be feminine. Let men have broader shoulders and big muscles and be tall, and even to my short kings, let them be what they want as well. And if a trans player wants to have some combo of that, then they can have that happen as well, but no, instead all actual diversity is thrown out the window and replaced with designs that appeal to absolutely nobody. Now instead of properly representing anyone, nobody gets anything. And then you all look worse for it, including these companies who prove that they're tone deaf. This is what I said. Once they come into the ch into the hobby, they change the hobby the way they want it. And when they finally change it, everyone not only not only that everyone else new, old, and potentially could have been part of the, the the hobby is now suffers, but the people who fundamentally change it suffers too, and they don't even know it till a little after the fact. Sometimes it takes a a little longer than that but usually it just almost is it's almost as immediate as the change itself right so like when that happens everyone leaves no one touches it no more and when you try to make something close to it those people try to look for anything you're doing that even resembles a bit of fun or anything that was was before and just tries to ruin it for everyone else it's not surprising though, considering Niantic has all sorts of initiatives to pander in different ways to increase their ESG score. I mean, after all, Niantic makes Pokemon Go, right? Which is a Nintendo product. Let's go look at Nintendo's ESG score and voila. 
They're sitting at a 16.6, which is considered low risk, which means investors are far more likely to invest in Nintendo because of that. So this change by Niantic is only being done to get Nintendo's ESG score into that 0 to 10 area, where they enter the upper echelons of wokeness. Again, for comparison, this has sake, to let's die, bro. Amazon from earlier to Nintendo, and as you can see, it's a big difference in their ESG risk. Even looking further, Microsoft has an even lower risk in terms of ESG than Nintendo's, which explains all the nonsense JR. coming out of Xbox. From it's not Dust just the Bowl, hobby that being ugly infested, fable though. When I worked in the in gaming Halo industry six to seven years ago, everyone was woke. I was the only one who wasn't. Oh, God. Oh, God. I don't think I would do well in this industry then, because I wanted to be a character designer for games, but Jesus Christ. Because... I have enough brains to say, okay, this character will work, this character will work, this will mostly be a more appealing character for the most general audience. No, we have to, we throw away, we throw away all that, that, that logic and reason out the window as soon as it doesn't fit the needs of some insane person. JR. That's crazy. And they let me go over different Vision XD. Jesus Christ. Infinite and Starfield being full of amorphous ugly people too. It's all being done to lower that score. And that's what Nintendo wants, which is why your games must suffer. And tying this back into Stellar Blade and even Warhammer, this is why this is all being done. These companies are not concerned with profits and consumer satisfaction. If they were, they wouldn't care for these things. But this is all a deliberate attempt to pander as much as humanly possible in the glory that is ESG, unfortunately. So with Warhammer 40k's own Games Workshop allegedly not wanting to bend the knee but having two things to Amazon, Stellar Blade being incredibly problematic in the mm -hmm. eyes of games media, or mm -hmm. Niantic destroying Pokemon Go with ugly body shapes, as you can see fellas, ESG is hitting on all fronts simultaneously. The only real answer to any of this is to vote with your wallets and spend your money, time, and no, engagement. No, I think wisely. I think what's oh. going to fix all of this if every company, if honestly, I think if everyone, every every person right now who hates this woke stuff, don't even go after the company. Go after Blacklock and Vanguard. Boycott the fuck out of these people. Boycott the fuck out of Larry Fink, who I think is the president or the owner of BlackRock, and, and 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 I don't know if he's also owner of Vanguard, but Vanguard too. Get rid of these two things. These are three because these three things are usually why mostly because if you look Riot at their Samurai. stocks, they're usually into everything. Yeah, they'll probably be like, yeah, I know that character appeals to, to the, the male, male gaze. gaze. Make her flat and give her the half shaved head cut. Yep, I think they refer to it as the mental he illness haircut. I think that's what they referred to us. Um, but the like the the issue is that I, I I'm just getting to, like it's weird. It, it, what what throws me off is I asked this question before and I don't think anyone answered this. But isn't it against the law to be a monopoly or something? Doesn't BlackRock have too much power in everything? Aren't they a form of a, of a monopoly in that sense? Like that 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 that's weird. Isn't that weird? Their hand, Black Ark and Vanguard is in everything from the housing market all the way to like video games and sh It's wild. And they're, if you look into their stocks, the, the, most of their investors, oh, well, they are investors. They're investing in like things like woke stuff. How are they this strong and no one's not noticing them? JR. BlackRock and Vanguard are just holdings companies, though. They blackmail other companies with investments. Damn. They don't own anything directly. Oh, so because they don't own anything, but they have this type of power, JR. they can do what they want. Not blackmail, I mean extort. S extort. That's crazy. That's crazy. That makes sense now. I was like wondering, isn't it against the law to be a monopoly in that sense? Because if you have a monopoly, you have overpower and that gives you too much power. Holy moly, that's crazy. All right, guys. So that's the DM. Like, subscribe, share, follow, comment. I hope you guys enjoyed this and all the great stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next